And welcome to RTF Sports Talk here on this beautiful Monday morning. I'm joined, as always, with Michael Buckheister the third, the man who once drank a gallon of Kool-Aid in 2.1 seconds. How you doing today, Mike? I'm doing great, man. It's a beautiful Monday morning. I'm ready to talk some sports with you, man. Yeah, I need to bounce back. I had a had a really exhausting sports weekend. Had a great weekend, you know, as far as life goes. But the sports weekend, it was exhausting. Uh, my, my Kentucky team lost on a essentially a buzzer beater, and um, and then as we'll talk about today, the Patriots man just uh, just got got caught off guard there. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know any other words to say. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to recap some of the love action that we had yesterday. We're going to start with your Chiefs, Michael Buckeister the third. They looked dead in the water. They did. And as for for a for, as a Patriots fan for about five minutes. And I almost texted you and said something about it, but I was like, no, let's, I just had a feeling in my heart I shouldn't. For about five minutes as a Patriots fan, it looked like we was going to jump to the one seed because we had the Dolphins pretty much dead to the water, no pun intended for them to be a Dolphin. And, and the Chiefs were looking at a fourth and nine against a Ravens team that was about to send out the all-out blitz. After seeing yesterday's outcome, do you feel more confident or less confident that the Chiefs can bring home the Lombardi. I am feeling kind of the same. Uh, like, as you guys know, I am a big Kansas City fan, but at the same time, I don't, I don't realistically see them making it to the Super Bowl. So, like, so, like, my, 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 uh, my opinion of the team so far has not changed. Yes, I still think we will make it to the AFC Championship chip game, but but I don't see them progressing past the Patriots or even past maybe even the Chargers this year to make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, so I, I, I like I, I'm going to take a take a take a line from you, Matthew Lyle, and I'm going to have a cop out answer and say I haven't really changed my opinion on the like on the Chiefs yet this year. Yeah, I mean this NFL, especially Saturday or Sunday, that lend, there was a lot of people losing that you didn't really expect was going to lose. And I think that's kind of happening here over the last couple of weeks combined, really. I mean, you look at the Bears go out there and, and, and playing lackadaisical one week and then flip around and, and beat probably the best team in the NFL with the, the Rams. You know, like we talked, so we'll touch on that a little bit more. But, yeah, if I'm a – char- if I'm a same thing, I'm a Patriots fan. If, if I'm a – as a Patriots fan, I look at these uh, Chiefs team and I'm – I'm okay with it. I mean, it stinks. I'd much rather had to go had everybody, everything run through Foxborough, but it, it's nice to get a loss out of the way like that. I, you guys didn't look too overly amazing in Kansas City, which an Arrowhead, which I'll take. Yeah. Um, but the, the scary thing is, and I think this is any team that wants to beat the Chiefs, almost like the Patriots had done, and and the Rams. You have to get far enough ahead on them where. When Mahomes turns it on, you're okay. Yeah. You know, you, you have to have a 14 point lead plus an offense that can at least score a couple more times because Mahomes is going to score. Mahomes is going to turn it on. Mahomes is going to put up two or three touchdowns in the second half, no matter how bad he, he could throw five interceptions in the first half. And, and I'm still saying this man is about to take three more in the second half. And, I think in order to beat the Chiefs, and this is where I'd feel comfortable if I was you, because I don't know how many teams, and, and maybe you just hit the nail on your head on the head with the Chargers and with the Patriots, and maybe the Rams too, but that's, that, that would be in the Super Bowl at, at the very best. It, there's not too many teams out there that can get a that can shut Mahomes down for a half, and then outscore him in a half as well. And I, I think that's that's the thing. If I'm with you, like yesterday watching that game, Mike. Whatever I thought of the Chiefs didn't change. I, I hold them in high regard. It just kind of echoed that sentiment that you can't have the Ravens' offense and beat the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and like, and and, and to add to that point, the the Chiefs are also starting to get healthy too. Eric Berry is he he is supposed to be back this next week too. Uh, Dia Ford, like he is starting to look like a like a Pro Bowl cal- caliber player that that he once was, but still the I think I just truly think that the AFC is so offensive heavy this year that 
you have to score 30 plus points to make it to the Super Bowl like this year. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like the, like the, like I, like I said, like the, my, my thoughts of the Chiefs haven't changed this year. I, I, I have yet. I, I'm excited to see what they do and like this, like on this next week's game. Right. Yeah. And then same thing with that. So moving on here, Colts beat the Texans, which had little to no effect. One of the bright spots in my sports Sunday, because that kind of, uh, gives the Patriots a little bit of a breathing room since the Texans lost and they were right there on the tail. But more importantly, with the Colts winning, in my opinion, the, the Texans have this division locked up. Now, I don't know how great of a record they'll end with, but th- that division's locked up. What more importantly stood out to me is the Colts winning. Who, ha- who, who, did the, who did that hurt the most? Let me find a way to word this. Who, who benefited the least of the Colts winning? Because now, even though Miami won... They're still, got, they're still down on the Colts. Uh, Baltimore lost. Uh, Tennessee still has to beat the Colts. They've already lost to the Colts. Uh, the Colts now look like the favorite to grab that last wild card spot. Who do you think them beating the Texans hurt the most? You know, I'm, I, 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 this is going to sound weird, but I think they kind of hurt themselves worse than actually helping themselves by winning this by winning this game Be- because let's say uh, like I believe right now they are projected to get uh six six seed in the FC playoffs and with that win they could very well very well jump up to the fifth seed very easily and then if you jump up, up if you jump up to the fifth seed you are looking to face a Patriots team that is probably just going to just 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 swipe you up and down. So uh, if they this, this, like this, like that last game, they would have stayed at that sixth seed, and I think they have a better chance of beating the Chiefs than they do the Patriots. So the Colts, had, had, they kind of hurt themselves worse than helping themselves. Well, uh, I get what you're saying, Mike, but let me, let me clarify the playoff picture a little better because I think you may have been looking at some things wrong. I don't, I don't think that – I don't care how many games the Colts win. They're not catching the Chargers or the Chiefs. The Chargers or the Chiefs already have 10 wins each. They're not, in my opinion, unless a colossal breakdown happens, a quarterback injury. The, Chief, the winner of that division is either going to have the, the fifth seed or the wild card is going to have the – the, the loser of that division is going to have the fifth seed no matter what. I don't see the Colts catching up to them on that. With that being said as well – you had to win to stay ahead of the Dolphins won. Right. The Titans won the other day. You had to stay ahead of that because if you lose that, you, you don't have a chance to make that up. And as far as the playoff goes, even if the Colts stay in the sixth seed, the, the Chiefs and the Patriots look like to be the one and two seed. They're going to get a bye. So the Colts would actually have to go and play either the Texans. It, it, since the Steelers lost last night, it looks like they're going to have to play the Texans at home the same thing they did yesterday, and they looked really good playing at Texas in that dome. Andrew Luck really carving up that secondary. So I think, if, if I'm me, I want that six, piece, six spot. I don't want to go to Pittsburgh in the cold. I want to go to Houston in that nice dome. But I, I don't think you can afford to lose on this if you're the Colts. You can't – that six seed being so viable and everybody – I mean, shoot, even Cleveland's got a shot to sneak into that last spot. I don't think you can ever risk taking a loss. And to answer the, the initial question, I think the team that hurts the most has got to be the Titans. You know, the Titans really played really good against Jacksonville. They're starting to feel momentum. But you've already got one loss versus the, uh, versus the Colts. You're going to have to play them again. And I just don't think they have the offensive firepower to keep up with Andrew Luck and what he can do with those weapons. Only thing that they got going in their favor, Andrew Luck has to go to Nashville. Might be a little colder late in December. But I just don't think Tennessee ha- – I don't think you're going to ever get a game from Derrick Henry like you got Thursday night, and I don't think they can keep up with it. So I think the team that hurts the most directly is the Titans. I think the Ravens took a shot by losing, but me and you and, and Billy's already talked about how tough their schedule is down the stretch. I don't think they truly stood a shot anymore anyway. Yeah, uh, so uh, like, I, like, I, like, I, like I kind of want to ask you a question here. Since the uh, Colts did beat Houston, Houston's next, next – Three games are versus the Jets, Eagles, and and J- Jaguars. Do you realistically seeing Texans losing two of their last 
games here and then the Colts possibly sneaking into like a tie and they own in the tiebreaker? I don't. I, I just think I think that team is sturdy enough to not win two of them. And uh, honestly, I look at all three and I look at Jets and I, I'm not really impressed by that. I look at the Jaguars and I think they're done. And I look at the Eagles, I think last night broke their spirit. Oh, 100%, I don't, yeah. I don't know how well they're – they still got a pretty tough stretch. I don't know how well their wild card chances are. I, I think it, I just think it's going to be tough for them. And I, I think the Texans are, are a solid team, and they know what they are. They know where they're trying to get to. They know how to achieve it. They got a good map, and they got a good vision. I, I think they're I think they're poised to win that win that division and finish around with the third seed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're a lock there. Like you can pretty much stick that X right right by their name there. So we're going to start going through some of the games. We're going to have a little quick question with each one. We can have a little discussion back and forth. Don't want to get too caught up on anything here. Uh, Panthers lost to the Browns. Quick, quick, little, little quick answers from you, Mike. Do you still like the Browns making the playoffs, even though it's not good odds? And are the Panthers' playoff hopes done? I think the Panthers are done. I think that I think that loss really hurt their spirits, and I think the and I think the Browns are really trending in the right die direction here they are they are two games out of first place Steelers did lose uh and I, I am and and we don't know what their quarterback situation is it is it is big Ben out for a long period of time is he is he you know is he going to come back healthy and still be the big Ben that we saw earlier this season but those are all questions that are up in the air and 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 I think Cleveland has has the momentum on their side, but the only thing bad about them is that tie. Uh, what was that week one or week two? Like like week when they one, had a yeah. tie. Uh, I think that's going to come back and come back and haunt them because they could have really used that win. Yeah, I, I, you just still see it even when Cleveland's playing good. They still make some quote unquote rookie mistakes, and I think those are some things that they're going to have to iron out. I think next year Cleveland's going to be real poised to make some noise in that AFC North. Uh, but I just, I just don't think that year, that time is now. As far as Carolina goes, I've been, I've been down on the Carolina stock for about the last month. I just thought a lot of negative things was going to be coming out of there. I, I don't think they have an identity. I thought the identity that they ha- did have, which was Cam Newton run around a little bit, check, you know, check it down to um, McCaffrey and then find an open man. I didn't think that was had the stability to work long term and it's just clear appears to be blowing up in their face. I don't I don't think they have the hope or want to anymore that they did to start the season. I think they're done. I don't think any playoffs in their future. And uh just to add 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 to the point though, if they if 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 there is a team to really sneak in there and to make some noise, Carolina might be that team. They are only a game out of of the sixth seed, uh and two games out of the fifth seed even so don't quite sleep on them yet but you can pretty much uh you can start counting those z's on them like i like i think all right so we're going to move on to one of the most shocking and painful losses for me yesterday i think anyone who watched the game for the most part i know we don't count moral victories here would say that the patriots look like the better team on the field yesterday but they didn't take advantage of everything they needed to. They didn't play aggressive enough down the stretch, in my opinion. You know, they, they played to win the field goal. They played for a field goal in the last couple of minutes and opposed to getting the touchdown and putting it up nine points. With that being said, it all lost. None of that mattered. The Dolphins were able to win on a double lateral, I guess you call it a little dig and dump play. It was a double lateral play that went 60 yards for a touchdown. Mike, in your opinion, what should the Patriots have done in that final seven seconds? Well, uh, I mean, I believe they had the right defense called. I mean, they had a prevent kind of set up. They didn't have anybody in the end zone from what the highlights I've seen of the tape. Uh, my biggest question that they had is why did they have a tight end playing free safety in, like, in that situation? Uh, you could have put uh, so, so Sony, uh, there, there are Sony in the back there. You could have put a backup wide receiver, anybody but uh, their tight end. Uh, it just 
he, he, he didn't seem very nimble, very athletic. He really looked out of place when he was trying to make that tackle at the, uh, at the pile on there. Uh, but, I mean, I, I'm not one to really to say uh, what a coach can and can't, can't do. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. It just well, – uh, so, like, like, that was just a play that if it happened nine more times, the Patriots are gone. They will s- stop it for a 20-yard game. Yeah, so the problem I have, and here, here's a – I got a couple thoughts on it. So I get why, in theory, Gronk is out there. He's the tallest guy you have. You're hoping that a Hail Mary doesn't catch you off guard, that Gronk can just jump up there and knock it down. I get the, I get the thought process in it. You know, we've seen the same things with the likes of Julio Jones, A.J. Green, Calvin Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald. We've seen these tall receivers come out there and do it. Randy Moss even for the Patriots. The key word there is receiver, though, not tight end. Right, and that's probably my biggest thing here is, and and also I think the most disappointing thing is, Belichick's always been the coach that's been ahead of this. Belichick, if there was ever a coach who kept a six foot four cornerback on the bench and who never played, but he was only on the roster for this one thing, I would think that would be Bill Belichick. You mean to tell me Bill Belichick, who thinks of everything, who outsmarts everyone, and who is the supposed to be the innovator, the one that comes to things first? Doesn't have a six foot two cornerback or a six foot three safety that can just come out there for this one thing. Maybe he's not good at coverage, but you didn't need a good at coverage. You just needed good height if they threw it over you or a solid tackler. Right. That's where it messed up. When Gronk tried to make that tackle, he took a horrible angle. He looked like his knees were not <laughs> ready for any type of movement like that. And, and the thing with Gronk, Gronk's not even your jump ball receiver. Gronk's more the polar bear that you throw it in his general direction and then he just mauls anyone around him. Yeah. Gronk's not really the guy that jumps over people. So uh, that, that's the problem that I had. And you've got to look at the way the game has changed. Tackling is not what it once was. And, and the Patriots team shows you that. And a lot of teams in the NFL are showing you this, that because of the restrictions in practice, guys can't tackle like they once could. So now the likelihood of a quarterback sitting back there throwing a 60-yard bomb it is much less likely than them just – Doing old hook and lateral and trying to get some some backyard, you know what, going. So I think I was a little disappointed that it wasn't that that they put Gronk out there, that it wasn't thought out a little properly, and that they didn't at least take that into consideration. When the ball was snapped, the only people on, on TV, the only people you could see in the screen was the four D linemen, which meant everybody else, the linebackers and DBs and Gronk himself, were so far back they that they weren't even in the camera's focus. So that right there told me that Bill did not anticipate the underneath throw that could have been a, a dump off and, and, and a lateral, which confuses me because that's pretty much how everyone tries to win these days, and it's only going to, that, that's only going to go up now that this has worked once. So, and then now you're tackling downhill. You're tackling against guys. you got blockers set up nicely. I just wish they would have – look, I'm all for playing prevent. I just wish you would have had some guys out there who get paid to tackle and get paid to deflect passes. Yeah, you're right. That's not what Gronk does. Yeah. What, one last question on this, Mike. Now, I know that you only hear this come out because of the Patriot haters, which I like to call them the Hatriots. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. On your point, uh, just, just in sports in general, and, and I understand that when you drop a play, everybody has a job to do in that play. But how do you feel about criticism towards potential, and this could, like this could be for any team, potential Hall of Famers catching flack and criticism for doing something that stereotypically is not in their job description? Example, you know, Tom Brady, 41-year-old man, got a lot of flack in the Super Bowl for dropping a pass that wasn't well thrown. Like, the man, you know, there's a reason you don't see 41-year-old receivers. There's just, you just don't see them. You know, the man's a quarterback, potentially arguably one of the best Hall of Fame shoe in. The man could go in the Hall of Fame today, and, and you're catching flat because you didn't catch the ball. You know, Gronk, arguably one of the best tight ends around, if not one of the best type, top ten tight ends of all time. Man can probably catch any pass when healthy and run over anybody on any defender. You know, give me old school Lawrence Thomas and Ray Lewis. I still like Gronk's odds. But now we're criticizing because he couldn't make a tackle. So, what's your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on that is you are a professional athlete. So, so the key word there is 
is athlete. You mean like in theory, you are the best of the best that is that that has, that has ever played the game. So, in my opinion, if a like if a coach asks a a tailback to go and play cornerback, he he should he should in he should in in theory be able to quote unquote hold his own. Maybe not be a lockdown, all pro, you know, make every play type of player, but he should be able to to could go in there and and perform at a level that is still at a mediocre type of standpoint. Um, so as so as your point to Tom Brady dropping up to to dropping a to dropping a dropping a pass, that that to me is not quite the same as a tight end trying to make a tackle on a open field play because Tom Brady in theory catches the ball every play. I mean, like, yes, it's not a, yes, it's not a over the shoulder catch or, you know, a like trying to, trying to catch and plant and spin and all that stuff. But he, he's still using using his hands every play. Now, as far as a tight end or a right or a wide receiver trying to make a tackle, Yes, I think their pure athleticism should put them in the position to make a play. Maybe not make a make a pitcher perfect tackle, but but at least fall on the guy's legs and trip him up. So, to answer the question, yes, I think they should be able to play anywhere and and and, and like still perform at the end of the day. Well, see, I'm going to take your words there. You said that they should if you put a. Uh, running back at cornerback, or you put Gronk at safety, or you put um, a cornerback, a, a, a quarterback at receiver, they should be able to perform mediocre. Now, you got to remember they're playing against pros. A mediocre tackler isn't going to get it done against an NFL running back. A mediocre cornerback isn't going to get it done against a good receiver. He should be able a, to slow him up enough to where the to where the other guys that are actually playing the position can come there to help out. But that's the thing. If you look at the film on Gronk, there was nobody. He was the last he, – he was the safety. Went in this line of defense. There is yeah. no one there. Yeah, and then my question to that is where where was everybody else? I mean, well, see, the, yeah. the, the, see Gronk's going to get the flack because he's the big name who was the yeah. last line of defense. Right. My question is – where was everybody else? Yeah, you know, me, like you said, why? What? Where's the guys that are safeties who are out of position? Yeah, I mean, I just there. There should have been seven guys in the end zone in theory, and then and you know if you split the if you split the field in half, there should have been four, maybe even five, five guys flowing to the ball. Where were those guys at? So you cannot look, tell me they weren't getting blocked. A, a couple of last things here. A, why did they, why did they not just line everybody up, all eleven guys? There's no rule that says anybody has to be anywhere. Why did they just allow everybody to line up and play Red Rover, Red Rover? Like, I mean, because the, the, the only way that the Patriots could have lost is if they got the end zone. Let them do whatever they want to do outside of the end zone. You just need to be standing there in the end zone and making sure that nothing crossed this line. That's why it, a lot of these plays, they baffle me. You know, you've got safeties who are, are down here on the 10 and 20-yard line trying to make tackles. Back it up. Gronk should have just lined up, right there, you know, hit Gronk and another safety should have just been patrolling that end zone. And if you can get him to take the sideline, which he did, he's just an easy push out. I mean, I say that for comparatively because I, I couldn't push him out. But, right. You know, for, for a pro. Now, to the original question, I don't think anyone's legacy should be defined or anyone should be – because trick plays are that. They're exactly trick plays, one-off plays. You shouldn't define Shaq's career by an airball three-point shot. You know, um, Ray Lewis's linebacking career should not be defined by his inability to catch a tight end pass. Yeah, and, and you are a you are a hundred percent correct on that issue. But your your career is defined in a big it is defined in a big play in a big game. Take take for take for example, Leon Lett when he. Fumbled the ball before he got to before he got to the end zone. Uh, I believe it was a playoff game. Uh, like I, I, I'm not for sure the like where that game landed, but it was a very big part of the Cowboys' career because that's what Leon Lett is now. You know, like when you think of 
Leon Lett, you think of two things. You think of c- cocaine and you think of the f- 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 fumbling via ball. Fair enough. I just think, I mean, I guess that's a good point. I just think you got to be, especially like, you know, Tom Brady's career. And look, it may not get defined by that one drop because at the end of the day, he still got five Super Bowls and three losses. And he could add to either one of those categories this year. Well, you know, he well, could, he, well the, 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 let's just say like that was his only time going to the Super Bowl and he lost because he did not catch that pass. I mean, he could have all the all the all the stats in the world, like all the yardage and touchdowns and plus playoff wins, but if that was his only Super Bowl game and he and he dropped the game like the game securing touchdown pass, that is how he would be well defined as a player. Let me let me just just shelf that thought for a second because that's going to be a, a big thing that I have at, at the end of the show that I got to say because it shouldn't be. Yeah, you know Tom Brady in that game. It shouldn't be, but it, it, it shouldn't be yeah. because let's be real. Tom Brady went out there getting carved up. Tom Brady wasn't the one having 500 yards put on him by Nick Foles. Tom Brady wasn't the one that allowed a blitzer to come through and sack him at the last second in the Super Bowl. Which, if you look at the film, yes, he could have done some things different, but he got. I mean, you you got to at least give your quarterback three seconds. Yeah, he didn't get three seconds. So I, I think that's something. Is let's move in onto some of these games. Giants at Redskins, real quick. Are you disappointed that the Giants aren't tanking? Uh, no, because if you remember about three or four weeks ago now, Odell Beckham said that they were going to run the table and then they were going to win those eight final games. And so I feel like, you know, they had every, every intention of not losing a game. Uh, yeah, they lost. I, I believe it's one game since like since then. Uh, and so so like the Giants had no, they had no, they have no reason to tank because uh, like they quote unquote have their tailback of the, of the future. They have their receiving core. The only thing they're missing is that quarterback to replace Eli. And and like I don't think that that quarterback is in the top of this year's draft. So there was no reason to tank. Well, I've been on this. In the NFL, you don't tank. You can't. The, 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 the GMs and owners are so quick to pull jobs away from quarter, for coaches. You can't risk being on the chopping block one or two years in. You don't get the, the uh, breathing room that you may in the NBA where if one player can come in. You know, if you go get a LeBron James, your, your whole yeah. team is different. The, the NFL is not going to lend itself to that. You can easily – look, Patrick Mahomes went number 10. You know, and, and, and a team traded up to get him. You know, Mitch Jarisky did go, what, what, I think, top five, but a team traded up to get him. So you can't just – like, you. it's not just a matter of losing and get who you want. It's a matter of having good GM and good ownership and making smart decisions. Right. So, if, if, so you don't have to come from the 1 in 15 ranks to get to 14 and 2 in a couple of years. All right, Michael, we're going to go through these once again. Let's, let's just speed them up a little bit. Uh, you brought up this question yesterday. Saints, uh, for, they, they ended up beating the Buccaneers pretty handily. But the Buccaneers held their own for the for a majority of that game. Should should the Buccaneers reconsider keeping Jameis Winston? Real quick. Uh, no, I think he has a cancer on that team. Yeah, I, I think he, even not even from that point on the field. I think you know what his potential is, and it's just getting you in slot fest like this. He, he gets you in enough game to where you can hang around with the has beens and, and the the will bees and the and the elite. But he's not going to give you an actual win, or he's not going to give you consistency. So I'm with you. Let's just move on from him. We talked yesterday that the Packers had to prove that this was a job you wanted. And Rodgers looked nice. He had his full arsenals of weapons. Everything seemed to be connected. If you're a head coach, does what you saw this week and potentially over the next couple of weeks, does that undo the concern that Aaron Rodgers is probably going to run the show if you take that job, if you're a head coach? I have to see more. Uh, yes, this this one game that Aaron Rodgers had, I was kind of impressed. But show me it two to three more weeks, and then I think this will be a well, then this will be a very hot job to so have. So you'll be willing to take it, even if you know that the moment he don't like you, he's got you fired. Uh, yeah, because y- you are in th- you are in theory learning from the goat of like all time, you know? So, 
So if you if if you if you learn from Aaron, you can take what you learn from learn learn from him and and pass it on to your next guy. See, uh, last thought on that. I don't know how good that works because look at Tom Brady's predecessor. Look at people who's worked with Tom Brady who's got to be in the same conversation. Aaron Rodgers. They don't really do well. Like it, it, I think. There's a reason that when you're working with greatness and you try to work with not so much greatness, it doesn't pan out. I don't think that translates well. Moving on, we, we called this kind of yesterday, Jets-Bills. It was an exciting one. It's probably one of the better games yesterday from start to finish. Is Jets and the Bills the best of the crappy teams? You know, I think so. Uh, they are both young uh, and, and maybe not next year, maybe not two years, but – Three years, like after this core, like these core young players start to, they gain some experience, they gain some confidence, like like in themselves. They're they're very good. They very well might top the newly formed Patriots over that top spot. I, I think they're both so far along, so far away. They they both play well against each other, and they play well against some other low ranked teams. I think the Bills a little further along than the Jets. But I, I still think both of them are, are long ways. And I don't know. I, li- I like the 49ers. I think they're a solid team that once they get Garoppolo back, that could be their future. So I don't think that the, the next wave of good teams to rise from bad teams are one of these. Bengals versus Chargers, close game. Chargers end up pulling it out, keep it neck and neck for the big game versus the Chiefs. As a Chiefs fan, are you any more or less worried about the Chargers than you were prior to that game? I am – I'm a little less worried worried about the Chargers because the because Cincinnati just isn't a very good team. They are a medi- mediocre middle middle of the range road team, and I think if the Chiefs just play the way they can play, the game won't even be close. All right, fair enough. Broncos lose to the 49ers as I predicted. Are the Broncos done? Uh, they they are six and seven. They are on the outside looking in. I, I, like I believe they're like eleven or twelve seed. I'm not 100 percent sure, but they're but they're only a game out with with the Colts, Baltimore. They're 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 probably done looking at their schedule ahead. Fair enough. Okay, we, we've kind of established that the Eagles are kind of in, in muddy water after losing to the Cowboys. Let's focus on the Cowboys on this one. Have they shaken the quote unquote eight and eight curse? I think they're seven and five now. So if, as long as they don't, as long as they win two more games, they'll uh, they'll they pretty much win the division and probably and finish better than eight and eight. Yeah, uh, did they shake it? And are they a contender once they get into the playoffs? They are currently eight and five. They they did shake it because I believe we both have them beating the Colts oh, this next good. week, uh, and they are going to beat the Giants and the Bucks. So they are probably a ten or eleven win team. Uh, I believe that puts them. Possibly in the third seed if things fall into place right, uh, but if four seed right now they're they're looking at playing Seattle in that first round, and the last time the Cowboys and Seahawks played in the playoffs, we 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 know what happened. Tony Romo and his great fumble brewski thing there. Uh, I don't think they are a contender in the playoffs yet. No. Yeah, I'm going to go the same. You're right. They are 8-5. and five. I thought they were still one game away from that 8 win, but they are. So I, I do think they'll do better than 8-8. Eight and eight. But I am concerned. I don't think they're going to catch up with the likes of the Rams, the Saints, or the Bears to get out of that fourth seed. Naturally, by winning that division, they will, be a, they will get a home, home field game. And I, it does look like it's going to be against the Seahawks. And like you said, I don't – Dak Prescott – is a worse version of Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson likes to really turn it on this time of year. I don't think they're going to win many playoff games, if any at all. Uh, I, I do think that they this is a step in the right direction. They've shaken off some of the curse. they got some nice young pieces. you got Zeke. you got Dak. you got Amari Cooper. You mentioned it yesterday. This is going to be a, a connection that you're going to hear a lot of over the next couple of years. This could be – they could be on to something. I just don't think this year is the year. Yeah, they're, they're, still, they're still just a little too raw, I think. Steelers gave it away to the Raiders. What's wrong with the Steelers? Well, uh, you know, I I really don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if it's their head games or if they're actually missing their tailback that much. Uh, but 
they are lacking a tailback game. Uh, I mean, I believe they, I believe they, I believe they, I believe they only rushed like 50 yards yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. So if they could put some yards on the ground, they'll, they'll be a better team. But right now they just, they don't have that game. Yeah. You know, um, there's a couple of levels to it. I, I do think they don't, they don't have an identity really. And I think that's one thing that's going to hurt them defensively. They're missing obviously their leader and, and Ryan Shazier, and I, and I don't know if he'll ever come back and play. So they're trying to figure out a lot of things there. The secondary, the secondary has been a, a crapshoot all year, and that's continuing. And and on the offensive side, they, they don't know. Do they want to be a ground-and-pound ball? Do they, they want to sling it all over the place? Ben doesn't seem to be at that same level that he has been in the past couple of years. And to your point, yes, Connor's out. So that's obviously going to be a drop-off. But, B, is, I think there's a progressive drop-off that's coming anyway. Because this was a marriage the, right, with, with uh, Connor, James Connor, and that offensive line that was really built out of aggression and spite, for the most part, uh, at, at Le'Veon Bell. I don't think that's something you can carry on for a long period of time. That's not something that's going to carry you for an entire season or an entire career. I, I, don't, I mean, James, I think James Connor's really good. I don't know if he's Le'Veon Bell good. And I think you're going to start to see some of those deficiencies – as, as the seasons and the years start to drag on and that line gets older, they start losing that chip that's on their shoulder that, like I said, built out of spite of the hatred for uh, Le'Veon. So, yeah, I, I think um, – I don't know. I, I, but I think that's a, it's a, it's a cumulative process of problems there. Yeah, and just, uh, and, and just a, a few quick points there. Look at their schedule ahead. They have the Patriots, Saints, and they finish up with, like, Cincinnati. They could very, easy, they could very easily lose all of those games, and they could find themselves on the outside of the playoffs. All right, real quick here. Uh, Lions Cardinals, did you even watch? I didn't. Uh, honestly, I, I can't even tell you who won that game. That's how much I cared about that game. The Lions won 17-3. Didn't even matter. No. Uh, big game here. Hate that we don't get to spend much time on it, but it's just how it works sometimes. Uh, Bears beat Rams in the exact opposite type of game than the Chiefs-Rams game, 15-6. to six. Are the Bears for real? Are the Rams not? Or was it just a, a cold night in Soldier Field? I think it's a, I think it's a little bit of both. I, 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 think, I, think the, I think the Rams are kind of maybe over, overrated some. Uh, because if that offense isn't isn't on pace like it has been, it shows them that they really can't win a fifteen to six six game or a nine to six game. Uh, and like in the Bears, they are just they are just they are that they they are that solid. I I think they are a very good uh, uh, NFC team. Yeah, I think I think the Bears do. Have, I think I think there's some truth to everything you said. However, I don't think the environment's going to lend itself to let that play out. If you look at the way the playoffs are forming, the Rams are going to play everything either in a dome, whether it be Minneapolis in the Super Bowl or New Orleans, if they somehow give up that position because New Orleans does have that tiebreaker, uh, and the or, or they're going to be playing in the West. Uh, there's not many Soldier Field games in the Rams' future. Yeah. And I think that's going to help them out. With that being said, outside of the first round of the playoffs with the Bears in that third seed, outside of that first round, there's not a whole lot of Soldier Field games in the Bears' future. So I think this was a perfect storm that me and you talked about. It was a night game. I don't even know if that game would have been that way if it would have been a 1 o'clock kickoff in a nice sunny environment. I think it took it being cold on a primetime game. That place was jumping. I, I think that's one thing. I don't know how often that's going to duplicate itself in the playoffs. Yeah. So tonight we have uh, Vikings at Seahawks, both super, both uh, playoff hopefuls, both still trying to to make it in. Who you got and why? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the Seahawks. Uh, I like them at at home. Uh, that crowd is gonna be loud and like aggressive. Home of the loudest stadium, I I I do believe. Uh, and I just don't have very much faith in the Vikings, to be honest. I'm not a big Kurt Cousins fan. I think he got way, way overpaid, and uh, it just is some, it's something about Pete Carroll and these late, late, late season games when somehow he always pull he always pulls them out. So yeah, I'm gonna echo the same there. Uh, I think the Seahawks are the better team. I think the Seahawks are the more desperate team. I think the Vikings kind of know that their their um, run is is not where they want it to be. Losing 
the game to the Vikings or to the Patriots, losing potentially this one to the Seahawks would all but end their season. I, I don't know if they have the the talent around that running game hasn't seemed to be what, what I thought it would be. Uh, Adam Thielen's having a monster year, but overall just that passing game seems to be hit and miss. The defense isn't what it was last year. Give me the Seahawks this. I, I think the Vikings are done. Do you think the loser of this game finds finds himself out of the playoffs? I, I think then you have to match up the loser of this game up versus the Panthers. Yeah. Um, I don't like the Eagles. I don't like what the Panthers are doing. I think they're both kind of running in mud. I think they get a chance. Okay, I don't think the Vikings have a chance. If it's the Seahawks, since they have the head-to-head versus the Panthers, I think they still have a chance. They've been here. They've done it. If the Vikings lose, I think it's pretty much a wrap for them. I have to echo the same point as you right there. All right, all right guys. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna save off, and, and we're going to keep you itching for more uh, rants and ravens and spice to tomorrow's show. Uh, but today's show, we're going to have to close it up. Uh, we got a little long-winded with some of these matchups. But that's what happens when you're getting into the playoff push and you got a lot of NFL games. We're going to end the show with this. Mike, any closing thoughts or, or tell the fans where they can find us at? Guys, we are uh, like we are, we are up on YouTube, RTF Sports Talk, uh, iTunes, uh, Google Podcast, Am- Amazon, Speaker, uh, Stitcher, et cetera. A, 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 any place where you can find your podcast, search for RTF Sports Talk. We're there. Be sure to subscribe, download, and follow it. Give us a ranking, preferably five stars. And if not, tell us why so we can improve the show. All right, you heard the man, and we're out. Join us tomorrow, 945.